We have seen an incredible increase of Iraqi refugees fleeing Iraq, coming to Lebanon, especially now that with what's happening in the Middle East, the Iraqi crisis is becoming a silent one. Heart for Lebanon is carrying a heavy weight. We are realizing now that we need to up our work and ministry among the Iraqi refugees. They need to have the minimum health, education, stability in their life. People who care, who will support them, who will stand next to them. So Heart for Lebanon is what, what we're doing is we are giving the emotional side. We are giving the support, being with them, hearing their stories, this family. They had everything. They had a beautiful house and uh, it was uh, her son first communion. And they went to church, you know, the first communion, the Catholic, they do the first communion, you know. And they went home and they were celebrating their, her kids. There were two of them, their age difference, like one year or two years, she told me. They were and at home, you know, celebrating, singing, and, you know, happy because her kids, they, they, they considered it's a big step as a Christian. And suddenly... <laughs> the door knocked and <laughs> and her brother opened the door <laughs> and they they put a gun and in, in, for into his head like this <laughs> oh, okay and they were masked so she didn't see them <laughs> who they are <laughs> and they went into the and they got all the whole family into a corner <laughs> Like animals. They took her son and they they were all shouting, screaming. They didn't know. The terrorists came in with guns. So they put all the women on the floor and they took this boy. Uh, so they ran, the women ran and like started kissing their feet and like just please don't take the kid. You know, they pushed this boy. Uh, you know, he was with the gown, the uh, first communion, the white gown. They hit, they pushed this boy and his head came on the wall and they cut his head. His head is cut from here. And then, uh, and then uh, when he hit the door and they saw blood and they thought that he was killed. They didn't do anything, this family. They were celebrating their son's first step of being Christian. And these terrorists left. They took their son that evening and they told them the terrorists. They said, we don't want you here. You, Christian, you have to leave. That's what they did. They took the son to the hospital, and from the hospital, they never came home. And they living in a small, small apartment. Her son has asthma, and this house is no good for him. So it's hard for her, you know, as a mother to see that. So some of them, they come to Lebanon just running away from the situation. They just want, some of them, they come here and they said, we just want to start back. We want to go to a place where we know that that's it. We don't need to fly again. We don't need to move. We don't need to run away. We need to a stable life for me and my kids. She is in black. She's covered from head to toe. Her name is Khawla. She came in Lebanon and we went visited her. We knew her sister before when Khawla was in Iraq and her sister told us that a terrible thing happened with my sister and she's coming to Lebanon. And when Khawla came, well, of course, she told us in details what happened. Well, they once called them and asked for a cistern because they, they had a, a cistern and it was uh, full of water. Both of her sons, uh, they're both in their 20s. One is newly married. They both work in Iraq, like they deliver water for homes and companies and, you know, these big trucks. And so somebody, they, had, they received a phone call in Iraq and they asked them to deliver water. So they, was, were, they told their parents, we're, we don't, we, we're gonna go and deliver the water, come back and for lunch or meal or something. So they left and they were late. They did not come back. Later they heard that when they delivered the water or the, when they were there, they, they parked the truck, there were terrorists there waiting for them. And the minute they were out of the truck, they shot both of them. At the same time, killed them both. On the day that the man was killed, uh, his, his, um, he, they found out that his wife was pregnant. The, he, his wife gave birth and uh, after she had given birth and he passed away, the daughter-in-law took the child and uh, went to Germany. Every time we visit her, uh, she is more than crying. You know, I don't know, in Lebanon we say like, 
like she's wailing, she's, she's, in grie she's grieving. She's, I mean, what can you say? For, but Khaula is coming to the, to, the, to the prayer group. She's joining the Bible study or the prayer group, and she, she told me the other day, I feel at peace when you read the Word of God. So that's what we're trying to say, to do. If you speak from the Word of God, there's power in the Jesus' Word. So it's reaching their hearts, reaching their, uh, uh, reaching their soul, gives them peace. So losing a home, losing a job, losing your car, all that, it's difficult. But losing your fam members uh, or your loved one and uh, not being able, as we say, to take your right from those people who did that, it's not easy. So you need to work with them and pray with them to forgive those people to be able to forgive so they will be free. Because not forgiving them, that will hurt them. That will, that's really, uh, it's really hard on them. I see Jesus almost every day in what I'm doing here and, and what I see the, the staff and the volunteers doing here. Uh, they, they are uh, the manifestation of Jesus to so many people. And whether or not that's giving them a cold cup of water or a package of food, or whether or not that is um, praying with them, listening to them. One of the biggest things I think we do is we listen. We listen to heart-wrenching stories, and then we pray and we offer hope that can only be found in our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, God is working in many ways, and what we are seeing like uh, surprising, uh, or we shouldn't be surprised as Christians because we have to have faith, but we, it does surprise that uh, us to see that God is answering prayers. Like, you know, sometimes you pray, you pray, and people say, oh, God is not answering. But I don't know, God is working with all these people, and every time we pray and we unite as a staff or as a, in prayer, we, there's, a, there's an answer. And they call us back and they tell us, uh, oh, my daughter was healed. There was a, la a lady carrying a baby. Her girl was, uh, had a stomach problem since birth, and she was a month, few months old, and she needed a little surgery in her tummy, and we prayed for her. And when she went to the doctor's appointment a few days later, he said, there's nothing, she's healed. So she called us and she said, God answered your prayer. So this is, yeah, God is working in their lives in so many ways. Yeah. It's very easy to sit back and to hear um, another sad story or to hear uh, something that just uh, breaks your heart. And it's easy to sit back and do nothing. Um, but I would encourage you to start with something, whether or not that be uh, praying on a regular basis, not just that one-time prayer, but on a regular basis, financially giving, thinking of coming on a vision trip to see what's going on in this part of the world, to see what God's doing here at Heart for Lebanon. Um, I would challenge uh, my brothers and sisters in the West especially to think about how can we be a part of something bigger than ourselves? How can we do something that would stretch us and challenge us um, and move us in the direction that God wants us to move in our lives? I get tickled because I know that it takes so many people to bless one individual. Now, now sometimes that can be discouraging. For me, it's overly encouraging because I know that it is a communal work. It's the body of Christ coming together. It's a church in the United States, in Europe, somewhere in Far East Asia that makes a contribution or sends a work team to come alongside with us. It's a Lebanese church that desires to host an event that Heart for Lebanon does or also contribute and partner with it. It's Heart for Lebanon staff, it's local volunteers and international volunteers. It's all of us joining hands. The body of Christ at its best, loving on people who need it so much.